three, two, one, cue Beach Guy. Beach Guy here, we're at the cabin for You Can Make It. This edition is Steakhouse Burgers. We're here with David, Gwenda, and Bill. Thank you, Beach Guy, for that great introduction. As Beach Guy told me, we're doing Steakhouse Burgers today. I had a request from somebody to do Steakhouse Burgers, but the problem with Steakhouse Burgers is if you want something to taste like it comes from a fancy steakhouse, you got to put a bit more effort into it. So unlike our usual You Can Make It videos, today's going to be a bit more ingredients and a bit harder, but well worth the effort. Uh, what I'm going to do today is you got to make several different things in stages to make your steakhouse burger. The first thing you got to make is caramelized onions. And to make those you need 15 milliliters or one tablespoon of canola oil, 15 milliliters or one tablespoon of wine vinegar, uh, 5 milliliters or one teaspoon of sugar, 5 milliliters or one teaspoon of thyme, one medium sized Spanish onion, two cloves of garlic, one milliliter or a quarter teaspoon of pepper, or one milliliter and a quarter teaspoon of salt. The first step is to thinly slice your onion, so you got to peel it and slice it. Next we're going to slice a couple of cloves of garlic up. So the next thing you got to do is actually heat the onions, so we're going to put it on just medium low heat, and we're going to put a tablespoon of oil in to get heated up. And while that's getting heated up, we'll just wait a few seconds for it to get warm. And another break from tradition, just before we throw the onions and garlic into the fry pan, normally we take internal quantities of vast amounts of wine on you can make it, but it's Canada today, we're at the beach, so I'm taking a beer. We're going to throw the onions and garlic in the frying pan. You'll notice not much sizzle because we're cooking it on medium low for a long period of time to caramelize it without burning it. Now that you've got all the ingredients in, just stir it around. And you're going to let this sit over medium low heat for 25 minutes, giving it the occasional stir. You don't have to stir it all the time, but the idea is to just stir it until it gets a nice deep brown color. Now you can see that the onions are nicely browned. Golden, no black parts, just nicely browned and caramelized. And you can take them and just set them aside up to any, even a day before if you want to, and just reheat them before you serve them. Okay, uh, what we're going to do now is cook some bacon, because you need bacon to make a steakhouse burger. The real difference between a burger at home and steakhouse burgers is they've got more equipment and time than you do. So I've taken six strips of bacon, and I've cut them in half, and I'm just going to throw them in a frying pan and fry them up just the way you like your bacon, the way you want to cook it too. While we're waiting for the bacon to cook, let's talk a little bit about what makes a steak burger. What you're going to do is try and fool your mind and think you're having steak instead of a hamburger. What steakhouses do is they'll cook up a bunch of caramelized onions so they have them to put on the burger. Because what do you have with steak but fried onions? Another thing they do is they don't use mustard and ketchup and relish and that kind of stuff. They use steak sauce because, again, it fools your mind into thinking that you're having steak. They'll sometimes add stuff to the beef to give it a little smoky flavor. We're going to add a little bit of the leftover bacon fat to give it a smoky flavor. And, of course, they use higher quality ingredients. Instead of just a craft slice, they'll use some good quality cheddar. I'm using a nice slice of Swiss today. All things that make you believe you're having a fancier meal closer to a steak than a burger. Okay, we set the bacon aside to drain on some paper towel. And you want to set aside exactly three tablespoons of the bacon grease to add to your hamburger. Well, we're going to start putting the meat patties together now, so what you're going to need is a pound and a half of meat, a quarter cup of milk, a couple of uh, cloves of garlic, a cup or 250 milliliters of bread squares. I just took a couple slices of bread and cut the crust off and cut it up, five milliliters or one teaspoon of salt, and two milliliters or a half teaspoon of pepper. The two cloves of garlic got to be minced, so we'll just smash them and get the skins off them. 
Okay, first thing we're going to do is put our breadcrumbs in the mixing bowl. Add one quarter of a cup of milk. And then just stir it up until it becomes a mushy paste. And once it gets wet, you're likely going to have to get your fingers in there to finish it off, but get it soaked up first. And just turn it into a mushy, gooey, feel good in your fingers paste. Now that we've got the breadcrumbs all moistened up, we're just going to take the beef and we're going to break it in chunks into the breadcrumb mixture and get all of it in there. A pound and a half of nice lean ground beef. Now we add the uh, two cloves of minced garlic, the bacon fat we saved from our bacon, three tablespoons of bacon fat, gives a little smoky flavor, one teaspoon or five milliliters salt. Exactly. Half a teaspoon or two milliliters of pepper. Exactly. And then you just want to start turning it together. And the idea is not to really squish it, it's to loosely mix it and keep going until it's thoroughly mixed but not handling it any more than you have to. Okay, now that you've got it thoroughly mixed, just take it out and you want to break it into four patties. I find the easiest way to do that is just kind of bring it around cut it in half, cut it in half again, and then just form each quarter into about a three-quarter inch, half to three-quarter inch patty. There you go, nice three-quarter inch well-formed patty. One of the secrets that they have at steakhouses is they have grills that get incredibly hot and that gives a real char flavor to the burger. So when you get your barbecue ready to cook your burgers, it's got to be as hot as you can get it. This one's over 600 degrees. So I've got both burners turned up to get it that hot. As soon as I open it up though, I'm going to turn one down to medium. And then we're going to throw one burger patty on the hot side. And we're going to just get them going. And that smoke and sizzle is what gives it the char flavor that you get from the steakhouse. I'm putting the bacon and onions on the reheat part of the grill just to get them a little bit warm before we make up the burgers. After two or three minutes on the hot side of the grill, you want to move the burgers over to the cool side of the grill so they can have a bit longer to cook without getting really charred. Okay, now they go back to the hot side for a couple of minutes. And those dark chill char marks are exactly what you need to make it taste like a steak burger. It started to flare up on this side, so I took it off the hot side and put it in the cooler side right away because you don't want to flare up to char. That ruins the flavor. Get them over the medium side, give them four or five minutes. Okay, we're just going to see if they're done because they've got to be measured 170, excuse me, 160 degrees in internal temperature. So you take an instant read meat thermometer and you slice it in the meat lengthwise like that, at least a couple inches in, and read it and 160 on the nose, perfectly cooked. We're going to put the burger together. We've got some high quality sesame rolls. We're going to start with just three half pieces of bacon on the bottom. We're going to put our meat patty on top. We're going to give it a little bit of seasoning salt. We're going to fire some nice Swiss cheese or your favorite cheese on top of that. And then we're going to put a little A1 sauce on the bun. Like I say, use a high quality bun but you can use sourdough bread, whatever kind of bread you like. That's half of the burger, so make sure you use a good one. And, of course, some nice caramelized onions. Just spread over the top of that. Put the lid on, and you have a steakhouse burger. Well, here's our burgers. I got my wife here today and my best friend. It's Canada Day. Steakhouse burgers, good wine, good food. I love it. Cheers.